Hi, my name's Tom. Welcome to another video of ATPL Tips. This is video number two in my short series on altimetry. Altimetry comes up in GNAV, it comes up in instruments, and it comes up in meteorology as well. So it'd be really helpful to get your head around it as early as possible within your ATPL studies. If you've not caught the first video yet, then go back and watch that. In it we covered QNH, QFE and QNE and discussed the relationship between each of them. This video will carry on from the first looking at density altitude and true altitude uh, and I'll give you a solid method to get through altimetry questions as well. As always, to play along at home you'll need a pen or a pencil, you'll need some paper and you'll need a calculator. I want to show you the image I referred to a lot in the previous video. This gives a decent summary of the different reference pressure settings and the types of height reporting we can get. Um, also, you may remember that the location of the 1013 datum, QNE, changes depending on the QNH and that we need to take this into account to maintain things like terrain avoidance. Before we get into density altitude and true altitude, I want to quickly show you the method that I used in exams. I actually only discovered this after I'd already taken GNAV and instruments, but it really helped me in meteorology. For each question, this is what I draw, or something like it. You'll see it as a simplified version of the graphics we've looked at previously. I start with a flight path, then draw my QNH level as some waves for nautical height, then add the land and add an obstacle if the question needs one, and then my ISO level, though this changes. Sometimes it's above sea level, sometimes it's below it. This sketch may seem a bit arduous, but it's a really useful one. I find that on here we can easily see the relationship between height, altitude and flight level, as well as the relationship between each of our pressure settings. I'm a bit of a visual learner, so I find this really helpful. And to save you some messing around, and because I'm nice, I've put a link in the video description below to a PDF of this, which you can go and print yourself off a couple. And as a quick recap, here are the formulas that we've looked at so far. One hectopascal equals 27 feet, and you might say 30 feet, and different books for different subjects will say either 27 or 30. Ultimately, be aware that it could be either read the question, because it will most likely in the exam tell you what to use. For the sake of this, I'm going to try and use 27, because I feel like it's a more accurate number than 30. 30 is what they taught you in PPL, 27 feels slightly more ATPLE. QFE equals QNH minus the elevation divided by 27, and pressure altitude is your elevation plus 1013 minus the QNH times 27. We already know that pressure doesn't remain constant. QNH and QFE are adjusted according to the outside pressure. Of course, we know that temperature changes all the time as well, and this is where density altitude and true altitude come in. These are changes to our altitude related to the temperature. Density altitude is mainly used to establish aircraft performance. A high density altitude can mean considerably less performance available to you out of the aircraft's engine. While true altitude is mainly to do with obstacle clearance, and obstacle clearance is important, and that is why it's probably the main focus of ATPL altimetry questions. Both density altitude and true altitude are adjustments made to the pressure altitude. Although with true altitude, it, it isn't quite that straightforward. You're almost definitely going to be asked to find a true altitude, having been given a QNH or a QFE. Uh, so think of the QNE pressure altitude as the medium between them. A flow like this might actually be kind of useful. Okay, it's formula time again. We're going to take a brief look at density altitude, though we're not going to spend a huge amount of time on density altitude because it doesn't come up nearly as much as true altitude does. But it's in there, so let's have a look at it. 
So density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperatures. Again, we're referring here to the ISA standard temperature lapse rate of two degrees per 1,000 feet. Now, I've said this before, if you've done MET, you'll know about different temperature lapse rates and changes with altitude, but the ISA standard atmosphere uses two degrees per 1,000 feet. This assumes a temperature of 15 degrees at sea level, so if we decrease by two degrees per 1,000 feet, by the time we get to 5,000, our temperature would be five, at 15,000 feet, our temperature would be minus 15. At 25,000 feet, our temperature would be minus 35. And you can work this out for any altitude using the formula shown here on the right. Note that above 36,000 feet, the temperature actually remains constant. We're not gonna get into how or why, that's a meteorology question. Just know that it does. So above 36,000 feet, we assume a temperature of minus 57 degrees. Anywho, back to density altitude. So the formula for density altitude is pressure altitude plus the ISA deviation times 120. There's a second formula which works if you are at ground level, if you are at an airfield, and that formula is density altitude equals pressure altitude plus the ambient temperature minus 15 times 120. Again, the reason we want to know this is to ascertain how well our aircraft is going to perform. The last thing we want to discover as pilots is that we needed a little bit more runway than was actually available to us. Now, there aren't nearly as many density altitude questions in the question banks as there are with true altitude, but there are some, so let's do one now. Okay, given a pressure altitude of 29,000 feet, an outside air temperature of minus 55 degrees, calculate the density altitude. So the first thing to do is try to work out what the ISA temperature should be at 29,000 feet. So to do that, we will take 15, which is standard at sea level, and we know that it increases by two degrees per thousand feet. So we want minus two times 29,000 feet divided by a thousand, because we only want the thousands. So those zeros will cancel each other out. What we end up with is 15 minus 58. Should give us minus 43. The actual outside temperature is minus 55 degrees Celsius. So the current temperature is, the difference between those two is 12 degrees. And it's colder than it should be, so we are ISA minus 12. So plugging that into our density altitude formula, we'll go DA equals 29,000 feet plus our ISA deviation, which is minus 12, times 120. So let's do that on the calculator. You can do this all as one operation. Just make sure to include the brackets. 29,000 plus minus 12 times 120. And the answer comes out 27,560. So I'm going to go with option B of the ones that are available to us, and that's correct. This means that the aircraft will perform as though it is at 27,500 feet. Now, this is a genuine exam question, but it's not really a great example of why density altitude is important to us. Where it's more clearly relevant is if you happen to go flying or you've already gone flying somewhere like Arizona or California, you might find you're at an airport with an elevation of 4,500 feet, but because it is so hot, your density altitude could be upwards of 10,000 feet or more. Your takeoff performance will be anemic at best, and if you do get off the ground, you'll find you get much worse climb and turning performance. And there are different ways to treat the engine 
in that kind of environment. Anyway, that's a subject for another day, and it comes up a little bit more when you study uh, performance, and I think also a little bit when you study engines in AGK. But let's get back to altitude, and that kind of covers density altitude. Find some questions in the bank and try them yourselves. What I really want to get onto now is true altitude. Okay, true altitude. Now this can feel super confusing. I'll try to break it down as simply as possible, but once I've shown you how to apply this method, this will be a case of practice, practice, practice in order to get proficient. Also, it's really easy to misunderstand what the question is asking, which is why practicing is so important. Pressure altitude allows us to make sure we're all using a standard pressure setting. However, as we saw earlier, the actual true vertical altitude of a flight level will vary depending on the actual atmospheric conditions. That's because of changes to the atmospheric pressure uh, caused by changes to the temperature of the air that you're in. Cold air is more dense, meaning the air molecules are closer together, whilst warm air is less dense, meaning there's more space between the air molecules. This is a massive topic within meteorology. Um, I'm not going into that now, but the basic principle of warm air being less dense and cold air being more dense should be enough to explain why we need true altitude. Clearly, as pilots all around the world, we need to use a standard QNE pressure setting to enable wide-scale coordination of aircraft and their flight levels. But as you can see, the true vertical elevation of those flight levels changes with temperature. As a general rule, the altitude changes by 4% for every 10 degrees of deviation from ISA. Another way of putting that is that the altimeter will show an error of four feet for every one degree Celsius ISA deviation per thousand feet. And we do this temperature correction for the column of air that is between the aircraft's indicated altitude and the surface it is flying over. More on that in a second. So here's a formula for true altitude. True altitude is equal to your indicated altitude based on your QNH, plus or minus a correction for temperature error. We've just seen that a formula for temperature error correction is this. Four times height above surface, that's what HAS stands for, divided by a thousand, because we only want the number of thousands, times your ISA deviation. Pause. Some of the books say pressure altitude divided by a thousand, and this can get confusing. If you go through trying to do uh, temperature corrections for your pressure altitude, i.e. based on 1013, you're going to get the question wrong. Many of the books say pressure altitude over a thousand, but when you read on, they say, however, you only do it for the column of air between the aircraft and the surface it's flying over. So I've rewritten this formula to say height above surface, and I'm scratching the word pressure altitude entirely because it is massively confusing. So temperature error correction is four times your height above the surface times uh, the ISA deviation. Right, so that's a, a formula that we understand for temperature error correction, and we can insert that into our true altitude formula to give us something like this. True altitude equals our indicated altitude, QNH, based, plus four times the height above the surface over a thousand times our ISA deviation. This is definitely one to write down. This is definitely a formula to know understand, practice, and if you can get this, it unlocks the, um, it unlocks your ability to do these true altitude questions. So the steps, simply put, for the, at least the 
more simple true altitude questions are these. Number one, work out what your ISA deviation is for the flight level you are at. Number two, convert your pressure altitude, your flight level, to an indicated altitude, which is based on QNH. Then apply the temperature correction to the height of the air column between where your aircraft is and the surface it's flying over. Then add them together. Okay, so let's take a look at a question. Um, here's our formula. True altitude is indicated altitude, and then we've got the temperature error correction to make. And the question says this. An aircraft is at flight level 150 overhead an airport. Given the elevation of the airport is 720 feet, the QNH is 1003 hectopascals, the outside air temperature at flight level 150 is minus 5 degrees Celsius, what is the approximate true altitude? Okay, grab yourself one of these, uh, one of these sheets, if you haven't already, or make a little sketch that looks something like it, and let's go for it. But what do we do? Well, here's a reminder of what the steps are along the way. The first thing that we want to do is work out our ISA deviation. Now, we're at 15,000 feet, and we know that we can do 15 minus 2 times 15,000 over 1,000 to work out our ISA deviation. That actually works out as 15 minus 30, which is minus 15. Now, our outside air temperature today is minus 5 degrees, so we are warmer than what it should be. We're 10 degrees warmer, so we are ISA plus 10. Okay, step number two, convert pressure altitude to indicated altitude. Well, here we are over an airfield, and we're at flight level 150. Our QNH is 1003, and because our QNH is less than 1013, our flight level reference, QNE, is below sea level. So this flight level 150 is in relation to a fictitious level below sea level. Well, indicated altitude is going to therefore be uh, the difference between 1013 and 1003, which is 10 times 27 feet per hectopascals, and that's going to work out at 270 feet. So the difference in level between our set 1013 datum and our sea level is 270 feet. That means that the height above sea level is going to be 15,000 minus 270. Can you see that? And that gives us 14,730 as an indicated altitude. Okay, that's cool. Now, we've got an airport with an elevation of 720 feet, so this altitude here is 720, uh, which means that this altitude, or this gap here, is what we need to do our temperature error correction to. So if we do 14730 minus 720, we're going to get 14010. And if you don't believe me, let's uh, do it in a calculator. Good. Okay, temperature error correction formula is going to be 4 times 14010 over 1000 times our ISA deviation. And remember we're ISA plus 10. So it's 10. Uh, you can rewrite this as 4 times 14.010. Uh, lose the thousands times 10. And that equals 4, 4 times 14.010 times 10 is 560.4. So we're warmer than ISA, so we're up here, which means that we can take our um, indicated altitude of 14,730, we add 560.4, 
and we end up with a true altitude which is 15290.4. So I'm going to say our true altitude, and I'll just rewrite this to make that clear. So indicated altitude plus temperature error correction equals 14730 plus 560, I'm going to lose the 0 0.4, and that equals 15290. That's our true altitude. Let's have a look at what the uh, what answers are available to us. Thankfully it's got the word approximately in the uh, question. The answers available to us are A, 15860, B, 15300, C, 14000, or D, 14700. I'm going to pretty safely say that 15290 is basically answer B. Brilliant. Correct. How did you do with that? If you want that question in any of the question banks, you can see that on AvExam, that question is number 15160. It's on ATPL GS, it's number 110451. On ATPL questions, it's 615899. And it's probably on Bristol as well. I don't have a subscription to um, Bristol Ground School's question bank. If you do and you found this question in Bristol, then uh, I'd love it if you could leave it in the comments below. Hopefully that wasn't too ridiculously difficult. There's a lot going on, um, but if you can break it down into steps, they're not so bad. Let's do another one. Same sort of thing. Okay, so the question says, an aircraft is flying at flight level 300. The outside air temperature is ISA plus 15. The QNH given by a station at an elevation of 3000 feet is 1020 hectopascals. Use one HPA equals 30 feet. Calculate the true altitude and round two hundreds of feet. Okay, there's two things going on here before we do anything. Firstly, they're telling us to use one hectopascal is equivalent to 30 feet. So I'm not gonna do 27 this time. Also, note right at the end of the question, it says calculate your altitude rounded to hundreds of feet. What does that tell you? It tells, it should tell you that you're not gonna get one of these answers precisely. Uh, that's kind of encouraging. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's set up the question. The steps are there. The first thing that we're gonna do is look for our ISA deviation. Now, the question actually tells us explicitly that this time we are ISA plus 15. Superb, that was easy. Uh, our QNH today is 1020, and that means that our QNE is going to be above the surface of the sea. So we're going to use this QNE here. Get rid of that one. And let's start setting out the page. So here's our plane. Uh, we are at flight level 300. And the elevation of our airfield is 3,000 feet. So let's convert our pressure altitude into an indicated altitude. We're at 30,000 feet relative to our reference datum of 1013. However, today we've got a higher pressure. So we also need to add this space to our 30,000 in order to get our, our indicated altitude. Well, the difference between 1020 and 1013 is seven hectopascals. Today they've told us to use 30 feet so we can do 7 times 30, and that will give us an additional, um, an additional altitude of 210 feet. So this here is 210. So our indicated altitude, which is from our current flight path to sea level, you love these straight lines, I'm sure. Um, our indicated altitude is 30210. Perfect. Now, we need to add an error correction for the temperature. 
we're flying over an airfield that is at 3,000 feet. So the parcel of air that is between us and the ground is actually 3,000 feet less than our indicated altitude. So we can take 3,000 off of 30,210 and we'll end up with an air parcel of 2,000, uh, oh sorry, 27,210 feet. And that's what we make our um, adjustment to for the non-standard temperature. So let's do four times 27.21 times plus 15. That's going to be our formula for the temperature error correction. And if we plug that into a calculator, 4 times 27.21 times 15. That gives us an answer of 1,632.6 feet. So let's look at the true altitude formula. True altitude is indicated altitude plus temperature error correction. Well, our indicated altitude is 30210. Our temperature error correction is 1633, I'm going to call that. We add them together, 30210 plus 1633-31843. And that is what I would say is our true altitude. Now let's look at the answers. We know that uh, they've asked us to round to hundreds of feet, so we could round that down to 31,800. And would you believe it, one of the answers is 31,800. Excellent. The other options are 28,500, 22,500, or 26,000. They're quite far apart, though being cheeky, if you've made a mistake somewhere along the way, there's a good chance that you could end up at one of these other answers instead. Let's see what uh, the correct answer is. Perfect, B, 31,800 feet. If you want this question on AVEXAM, it's question number 7271. If you want this on ATPL GS, then that's question number 110409. And if you want this on ATPL questions, it's question number 614859. If you can find this on Bristol in their question bank, then please leave it, uh, please leave the question number in the comments below. That would be fantastic. I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, hopefully this makes some sort of sense and you're beginning to find this a sensible process. I hope this sheet helps for you to set out the question to work out what it is it's asking you. Um, I think we're going to take a break. I need some coffee, uh, but come back for video number three and we will um, smash some more questions. Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. In the meantime, subscribe if you're not already and I'll uh, see you in the next one.